All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another edition of Shabbat Lounge. This is Matt and Jake here, coming to you uh, talking about uh, current events. Kinda, yeah. Kinda. It's kind of a uh, how they apply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Current events, definitely. Uh, you know, the events are happening, aren't they? Currently, so uh, <laughs> they they never seem to stop. Um, so, but here we are. We find ourselves. If you're looking at this later after the fact, we're January 2021, and we've had a crazy election cycle. And uh, many of us probably didn't get to, didn't turn out the way we maybe thought that that it should or we wanted it to. Do you think that's fair to say? Very fair that things have been unfair. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Yes, very fair to say that. And uh, is, Jake, isn't it ironic that at the same time we see all this happening in the Torah portions, we're reading about people living in Egypt. Yeah, it's a little too ironic. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so we're reading about people that uh, left Egypt and they left under ty- tyrannical oppression. Yeah. Under a dictatorship. Yeah. Not only a dictatorship, but the guy literally thought he was little G God, but he didn't think he was a little G God. He thought he was a big G God. He thought he was big G, yeah. The big G. Ooh, is that what that means? I don't... Have I heard that? I don't know. Oh, you've never heard that? I I think that stands for gangster. Oh. Um, Are you gangster? No, I'm not in any way. (laughs) (laughs) So anyway... So, but we're reading about these people that leave Egypt and uh, leave a a dictatorship. Um, And so we've heard a lot about, um, over the last year or so, about making America great again. And uh, and so I kind of started thinking about, wait a minute, did did anybody that left Egypt, did they say, let's make Egypt great again? Um, I mean, not in those exact words. They did cry out for Egypt they while did, they were yeah. gone. Mm-hmm. Some of them did. Yeah. Maybe not all of them. Yeah. So definitely, you know, they left a life of what some would say was luxury. You know, it was the most modern country on the world. Uh, you know, at, at its time, they had the universities. They had, you know, the wealth, the military, um, you know, all kinds of, you know, reasons. People came all around the world to trade. Uh, they grew cotton here. Uh, they made paper, you know, all kinds of things happened here on the Nile. It was pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, uh, you know, it, you know, there have been some people that even argue they found batteries and all in running water in some of these palaces and things, you know, just things that seem to kind of defy what we think of in ancient cultures. But but they had a pretty modern life and a pretty modern system, more more advanced and more modern, I think, than we realize. Yeah. And the the Israelites, no, they they wouldn't have been privy to all the all no. the modern no. most modern conveniences, but they would have been better off than you know living in in the wilderness with nothing. Mm-hmm. So you know, my point is, you know, what's our identity? You know, we get so wrapped up in this American red, white, and blue identity, our founding fathers. But you know, just just take a look at Washington D.C. and look at the Egyptian influence there. You know. That in fact we have the world's largest obelisk in Washington D.C. Yeah, you know, just go go research what that means. Um, you know, don't do that in front of your children, or um, you know, I, we probably need to be a certain age to go research these things. <laughs> um, and uh, we're not going to go into detail about what they mean, but uh, it just doesn't take a rocket scientist once you start reading a little bit. You're like, oh, okay, I get it, right. But, you know, definitely, you know, Washington, D.C. is full of Greek, Roman and Egyptian mythology. And so, you know, there is there was an intentional connection to that. And so do you think, um, you know, when people leave Egypt, you know, uh, I'm not sure that they're using a lot of terms like make Egypt great again or make the Pharaoh great. You know, the Pharaoh, you know, it was so great back in Egypt in the good old days. But you brought up a good point point that eventually they do. You know, they get out in the desert and they suffer a little bit and they're like, wait a minute. I had food. I had some awesome food on my table every day back in Egypt. Yeah, it wasn't the same food every day. Yeah. And then it's interesting that, you know, their bellies drove them. Yeah. You know, you not, see that a lot today. Too. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a lot different. So and, and it is you, kind of an important thing. I mean, yeah. food. Oh, it is, it's it very is pretty important. important. It's almost like you need it. 
Yeah, well, most okay. like it's required. Yeah. So, but you also, do you think that as they're leaving, do you think they still identified themselves as Egyptians? Uh, I think there were, may have been, you know, groups of people that might have. I mean, I think about uh, uh, Cora. I mean, he wanted to be in charge. Maybe he didn't think of himself as an Egyptian, but uh, clearly Egyptians came out with them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, I don't know. I, I would imagine t on some level they did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is possible, for sure. But they're, you know, if, if they were too worried about being Egyptian, I don't think they would have left. Right. You know, they'd be like, hey, well, I'm not leaving this. This is awesome. Yeah. But... So I do think it's a gut check time for us, all of us who call ourselves believers in one true L. You know, who are we serving? What's our identity? You know, so many people, I believe, have quite possibly made the red, white, and blue, uh, their political party, their leader, have made those idols. And, um, and, some, and I believe there's a lot of really good people that have got caught up in these things. Yeah. I think uh, maybe we put too much importance on, you know, uh, America, you know, as, you know, and yeah, it's kind of the best thing going. It's, you know, the, I'm not, we're not saying we want to be anywhere else. Yeah. It's, it's kind of the best of a lot of bad systems. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, um, yeah, you get, once you forget where your true loyalty is, um, it's easy to get caught up in, uh, I have a quick example maybe that kind of helps. So I went to, uh, a church in Pennsylvania, um, and they had the American flag out front, right? And then they had the Christian flag, mm -hmm. if you've seen this, and they had the Christian flag higher than the American flag. And they had someone from the military, you know, start going to that church, but he didn't like that because the, you know, the American flag's supposed to be higher than the other flags around, right? That's kind of the... That's the rules. The rules, right. And, you know, the pastor of the church, a friend of mine, he said, uh, well, I'm a Christian first and then an American, which I think is how we should be looking at it yeah. is is I follow Yahweh first, and then I'm an American. Um, and I think it's easy to, because the American flag is, it's in your face, you know, the life we're living is in our face, whereas, you know, living uh, for Yahweh is kind of a, it has an ethereal kind of above things kind of you got to look for it you got to mm. use your imagination to 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 remember that that's what's going on mm -hmm. because it's not just we're very visual beings and if it's not right in front of us we don't really think of it as often as maybe we should yeah yeah that's a good point and the the flag is everywhere yeah and we're not saying that we think the flag is bad or you know any of those things but it's um it's what you put your faith your hope and your trust in so you, you know we we tend to run after the things of egypt uh, quite often and and i do believe that um that you know while you know we definitely have this heightened emotion don't you think that's fair to say people emotions are running high yes and in the united states and maybe worldwide and and we do know what is the what, well, let's think about it. What does the Torah tell us about our emotions and our heart? Uh, they're deceitful and, <laughs> yes. and tricky. That's right. And so emotions run high, and I think we're, it's very easy to be manipulated. And I think a lot of people are allowing themselves to be manipulated because maybe they're hearing what they want to hear. And, you know, to me, America is born in rebellion. And, you know, from the beginning, we're about rebellion, yeah. And uh, we have a lot of stories about rebelling and, you know, from the American Revolution, the War of 1812, and then, you know, what we see happen in Texas, the great state of Texas, by the way, and the Alamo. And, you know, there's a lot of rebellion in these stories and, you know, the Civil War, um, 
you know, just story after story after story. And what does what does Yah say about rebellion? Uh, I think he says, uh, uh, "Stone the children with rebellious <laughs> hearts." <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and, and clearly it, it isn't the same thing. And it, right, you know, it's what you're rebelling against is yeah. the important thing. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not trying to say that that was necessarily bad. All those things, but um, but it is it isn't a an aggressive, you know, mm-hmm. and and thumb your nose it's it's like uh it's like uh when cain is angry at abel yahweh says be careful because sin is crouching at your door Mm -hmm. with rebellion it's very easy to walk out your door and sin's crouching there and you get jumped by it so if you're running around in rebellion even if it's to the right cause, mm. you know, sin is crouching at your door. Yeah. In that. Yeah. yeah, I've definitely been in rebellion myself. Uh, I've been in a church where I was in rebellion against the things they were doing and the things they taught. And uh, I finally came to the, my wife and I finally came to the conclusion that uh, it wasn't right for us to be in that rebellion and that and cause so many people grief that we should just leave, you know, that that wasn't our fight. And these people weren't going to fight with us. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And we were just causing them a lot of grief. And they were good people. They were good God-fearing people that just saw things differently than we did. And uh, we weren't going going to do anybody any favors by continuing to be in rebellion. It was just causing discord. Yeah. And uh, But, but, you know, I do think you can make an argument. A lot of people say America is based in Judeo-Christian values and Yes, there's some truth to that, but there's also a lot of truth to rebellion, you know, just being birthed out of rebellion. And uh, and I fought that for a long time because I have it in my bloodline lineage. I have people that fought in the American Revolution and in, in, um, in the Texas Revolution. And so, yeah, it's it's in my DNA to, to push back and fight. And, and in my heart of hearts, my flesh, I would like to do that. But I don't know that that's what Yah is calling me to do. Right. And, um, you know, and so, um, but, you know, who we, we have to decide who are uh, real kingdom. And I see a lot of, you know, we see a lot of political leaders, church leaders, world leaders that rise up and they're like the little horn in Daniel. Yeah, there's a lot of little horns running around. Seems, seems to be hundreds of them yeah. on both sides, you know, the political right, the political left. Um, every every place you look, you see them. You probably have worked in a workplace where there was a little horn. Yeah, I have. Yeah, and they are very annoying. <laughs> and there's a lot of dangerous things about you know that being the little horn. And you see so many people that are boasting and bragging, and you know we've seen a lot of that. And uh, you know I, I think there's a whole element of we need to be very careful not to be robbing. Yahua of his glory. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people that are kind of drunk on the power that people have, have allowed them to have. Um, not necessarily drunk on the power that Yahweh's allowed them to have. Mm-hmm. Um, because there are people in positions that Yahweh has, Absolutely. has given power to. Um, uh, but I think also there's, you know, positions where people give them power that they don't technically have especially in america right it's we the people that are in charge Mm -hmm. and we give a lot more credit to our politicians than maybe we should yeah and i think we're entering a time when we have to be just be so careful that the thing that i kept feeling all week was this con that concept of i don't want to um, do anything to take his glory from him. I don't feel like that is anything we're supposed to do. You definitely don't see it in Moses. He's not competing for glory. Um, and well, and the, the one time that he does, you could argue he did get in trouble for it. Yeah. So, you know, it's very clear that we are not to, to be that. And I think it's really easy to, in America today, uh, we were, you know, a lot of people are about to get, and I, and, and I'm going to be honest, I get fired up when I look at some of the legislation and some of the bills that are coming up and I'm like, Oh no, I, I want to fight. I want to get fired up by these things. But, you know, we're reading this Egyptian story and 
and they had every right to be fired up and want to fight but they could have fought and made egypt what it you know what they needed it to be could have turned it into a bloodbath but they don't no and and, and because they don't um yahuwah has all the glory and i think that is something that's very important to remember in these times as is we can put our faith in you know what is it the three b's i don't know the but, three b's <laughs> <laughs> and bears <laughs> beats <laughs> Battlestar Galactica. So no, no prayer faith in them. Uh, so uh beans is one of them, you know, people talk about having food and you know provision and you know I, I think for sure we should be people who are prepared. I think there's no doubt that you know that um being prepared is you know we we see it in the life of Joseph. We just read about how it's you know it was important for them to be prepared. But right. But we can put all our faith in what we can do and how we can fight and how we can do this and we can do this. And, and, and they're taking my rights and my rights and my rights. And then you're like, wait a minute, I, I'm hearing a lot of me in yeah. this conversation. And I think that is what I'm hearing amongst a lot of people that I would say are fellow believers. I, that's what I hear. I hear me, 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 my, 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 my. Yeah. And I think that's how the father looks at it too. And uh, we need to be very careful about how we, what we're saying are ours. Right. And, 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 and we need to be thinking about what is he wanting to do here? And I think, unfortunately, we find ourselves in a place that's very like the Egypt. And unfortunately, many people aren't ready to cry out. They should be. And not many people are ready to cry out, but, but, uh, unfortunately for us to be in a place where he delivers us, we may be just beginning to experience Egypt the way these Egyptians experienced it. And uh, unfortunately, that may be a path we have to go on. And uh, But bottom line is, you need to make sure, we all need to make sure that we are not doing anything to take away or diminish his glory and what he wants to do, because he's going to do a mighty thing here, no doubt. We know, we know the end of this book, and many of us started at the end. Right, and um, how how does... How do you know something uh, miraculous is is happening? Something uh, uh, a great work is coming from Yahweh's hand. I mean, it's when circumstances get real bad and He pulls you out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see no way out and He pulls you out of it. When uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are in the fire and He pulls them out of it, or when uh, um, you know, or uh, think about the the believers in China that where it's cracked down on them so hard that you know it just it it just you know uh, brings out there's no there's no hero if there's no adversity, right? Right. So I mean, you think about atrocities from World War II. A lot of heroes were made in that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and right now you hear a lot of people upset about they're taking, they're kicking us off of this. They're kicking us off of that. They're shutting down social media and all this stuff. And I'm like, well, first off, you need to do a little research here on what social media is and what, what they're doing with your data and how you're the product. And, um, you know, there's a whole nother thing about that. You know, there's a lot of evil in it. And so, you know, if he shuts down some evil, okay, you know that you're kicks you off of an evil thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and how do you know that these new things aren't the same? You know, they, they may say they're not, but still, but it started out know. the other platform started <laughs> yes. out that, that way also. Yes. Yeah. People quickly forget. And, um, you know, but people are, you know, running all around and being all upset and we're like, wait a minute, stop for a second. Who created the first wireless network? Would be Tesla. our father. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he created the ultimate wireless network yeah. and connected all of all of us to him, to other believers, through uh, the Ruach Hakadesh, right. aka the Holy Spirit. So, I mean, whatever. I mean, I, man doesn't tell me how I can be connected. I, I don't rely on that. And if you are, well, also I see, just like the movie. Eh, can I say it? It, well, I, it, there's a Disney certain Pixar movie 
that uh, where the monster there were monsters and they fed on fear. And I see that's what's happening in the world today. That movie foreshadowed what we see today. And people are so afraid. They're running away. They're running around in fear. They're afraid of the government. They're afraid of the media. They're afraid of a virus. And there's I, a lot of people making money off of it. Yes. Yeah. It's fear porn. And people are consuming it. I, I'm guilty. You know, I, I like to watch the train wreck. And so I'll watch plenty of this crazy nonsense. But, uh, you know, I, but I try to acknowledge what it is. Right. But I think there's a lot of people trying to manipulate us and scare us. And, and the enemy is is feeding on that fear and growing stronger because we feed it. And so I think we've got to stop. And, it, you know, I'm rebu- rebuking myself. I've got to stop feeding that fear. You know, right. and, and I just challenge you to think about that. You know, are you feeding that fear? Are you contributing to that problem? And and, and and put your hope and your faith and trust that Yahuwah is big enough, smart enough. He built the first wireless network. You know, we talked about China. Um, do you know how people in China would know where to meet? How's that? Well, people in China, you know, they clearly couldn't go, hey, let's meet there next week. Why couldn't they say that? Well, because... Uh, the social credit score, right? I mean, <laughs> because... Uh, then everyone because they're being monitored everyone's watching them and uh, if they just say hey let's go over there then they'll get uh uh you know the SWAT team will come in and Mm -hmm. break them up yeah because they're not supposed to break up that speakeasy and so what a lot of people say that happens in china is that that believers get together in house churches and they pray silently to themselves on their own of where they should meet next time, but about the time, the place, you know, all of that. And they just show up on where the spirit tells them to go. And it turns out they show up at the same place, the same time. Hmm. Like, huh, how's that work? That's amazing. And, and so, but, but we shouldn't be surprised. That's how this works. And, and I think a lot of us have put so much faith and trust in the modern, um, the modern things of man and uh, we get so upset and bent in a knot about what this group and what this social media group is doing to this group. And that's not right. And once again, we get caught in this endless spiral of my rights, my things, my, 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 we're just like those little birds. That was also in the cartoon. Wasn't <laughs> yes. it? Mine. Mine. Yeah. Everything's mine. So Jake, where do we go? What, how do we wrap this up? We can't. <laughs> it's, well, uh, we're, we're kind of in a position where there is no wilderness to flee to connected to America, really. I mean, you can go out in the desert, <laughs> I guess. But uh, the laws of the land just affect the you there burning, also. Just not the Burning Man desert. Don't right. Do that. No. Say no to Burning Man. Yeah. That's bad. So, um, I don't know. It's only, yeah. You kind of got to... Wait for that deliverance. And, and I think um, don't be surprised if, if, if you see things get worse. I mean, I, I mean, don't be surprised. Don't be shocked by that. Yeah, I think um, we think that it's as bad as it can get. But, I mean, we're still a first world nation. With, yeah, yeah. You know, all the modern conveniences. And uh, is anyone really enslaving you in the way that uh, you would think of slavery? I mean, exactly. Sure, you're you're a slave to your job and all this stuff, and there is a form of slavery sure. where you're a cog in a machine, a slave to money. Yeah, but is no one's kicking down my door hmm. yet, right? So it, it can get worse. I mean, and I think you know we do, we I don't think we find ourselves pushed up against the Red Sea with the the army at our back yet but you can see it's headed that direction yeah yeah and we can't be surprised you know history repeats itself and unfortunately and i do think there's some wisdom here you know i think we can do a couple things we can pray Mm -hmm. that that we can wake up and be delivered before these moments happen and and i think that's a, a possibility um, but unfortunately, human nature and history teaches us that, you know, we're going to have to be squashed a little bit before we cry out. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think we, that 
we as people who want to prepare you know uh for the bad things to come need to remember that they were forced to leave their homes even if they were were in their you know they had their their farm set aside yeah. you know and they had everything to to withstand the storm at their house you know they could have been preppers and everything but they had they had to leave all that and i think uh if we're gonna believe in a, a second exodus as it as it you know explains in scripture then all the provision that well i'm gonna hold out here is not going to help you in the long run sure it's good to do those things but don't count on that to be your your end strategy that's not the end the end is they left and then the army was behind them so i until you know Yahweh didn't keep the army from from chasing them, you know, until you're you got the Red Sea and the the Egyptian army, you know, pushing you into the sea. Then I don't think I don't think the the uh, uh, salvation that we see is going to be as uh, is going to be a greater mm. unless the thing coming against us is greater than right. what they faced. Yeah. And we're not there yet. And that goes right into his glory. You know, we want all the glory to go to him and it will, you know, it, people will talk about the greater Exodus and it will make the first Exodus look like the very small thing. No one will is, talk about it, which is hard yep. to imagine. Yeah. And, but it should give you, it should give us all great hope. There is great hope. Don't live in the fear. And I think that's the message that, I feel like Yahuwah keeps telling me, don't live in the fear. He just says it over and over and over and over. Don't get sucked in the fear. And and unfortunately for me, I've told my wife a lot of these things. And when I'm watching my getting my my daily fill of the fear myself, she's like, hey, why are you doing that? And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but it's so hard not to stop listening to these things. And, you know, and I think about my own life, how much better would I be instead of, consuming all this media about the fear if i just started consuming these words more and i'm like eh, i probably should do this more yeah and less of the fear yeah and you know bottom line you know we want you to to try to think about those things and and just just ask yourself what are you feeding today and i think it's a moment by moment minute by minute question is is what am i going to feed today am i going to feed the fear or am i going to feed my faith fear or faith yeah i don't know i've been that's about all I have on it. I feel like I could just ramble on forever. Yeah, I think I think we get the, you know, I I hope you get the message that we're trying to put out there of, uh, you know, being, you know, faithful and and leaning on Yahweh instead of your own provision and uh, you know trusting in Him. Just no. trusting no. in trust and faith. And bottom line is, you know, everything that um, that we do. Um, even here with Sabbath Lounge, we we don't want any of the glory for ourselves. We don't want any of the credit. None, you know, the, the, none of the credit should go to us. It should go to our Most High Elohim. Uh, he gets all the glory, all the credit. And and our point is, we will just want to help point you to Him, right? Um, and, and and encourage you to to dive deeper in your faith and to not look to people like us or anyone else as being the experts. He's the expert. We're just all trying to learn what he said to do. Yeah. So, but we do appreciate your time commitment that you stopped by, that you took a minute to listen to us. We ask that you like subscribe, comment, share, you know, uh, send this as a text message to a friend and say, Hey, this is great. You should listen to it. So anything you can do like that, we appreciate it. Not because we think we're great. Right. Just, uh, you know, if it's helpful, then we want it to help people. So. Mm -hmm. We just want to be um, servants of the Most High, and like we said, uh, we, we want Him to receive all the glory, all the credit, um, because it, it belongs to Him. We don't want any of it. So we appreciate you listening to uh, Shabbat Lounge. This is Matt and, and Jake signing off. See you later. See ya.